Hey, we're live here now, and uh, I'm Peter Karloftis, Three Rooms Press, and uh, we are here today to celebrate uh, a brand new book, uh, The Unvarnished Gary Phillips. Uh, it's a Mondo Pulp Collection, so you can see the whole thing there, and that's Gary behind the wheel. Uh, the Phantom is chasing him, and uh, he's in control, though, believe me, when you read the book. It's a wonderful collection of 17 stories that uh, you'll never have uh, see the likes of again or read the likes of again enjoyably. Uh, it's a real page turner. And we're happy to have Gary uh, here tonight in conversation with Christopher Chambers. So um, without further ado, let's bring Gary up. And uh, you can go to our shop right here if you see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can go to our page, threeroomspress.com shop. And it's right on top, the unvarnished. Gary Phillips is $17. So please get a copy. And uh, let's bring up Gary now. And uh, we'll uh, introduce Gary, who's uh, done it all. He's one of the one of the finest writers of our time. <laughs> and in the in the crime field, maybe the finest. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people out there would want to argue, but they're not here. So they can't <laughs> get in their work. Yeah, we're not letting them in. Yeah, that's right. That's we're right. not letting them in. So uh, how you doing, Gary? I'm fine, Peter. <laughs> thanks for thanks for uh, putting this on, man. Yeah, man, it's good to have you. It's always good to be with you. You know, we were at BoucherCon. We yeah, had a real nice right. time there. We uh, did. And, and uh, it was great hanging out with you there. So it's wonderful to share the screen with you, screen time with you. Screen and we time. do have uh, your book, The Unvarnished, Gary Phillips. Uh, we <laughs> talked about this maybe a year ago, uh, a little yeah, more yeah. than a year ago. Maybe yeah. it was September. October of last year, 2022, and uh, you said the title, The Unvarnished, and, uh, and, and, and we decided to call it The Unvarnished Gary Phillips, because it is. It's uh, all about <laughs> your stories, 17 stories, 16 of them have been in other collect collections, anthologies. Including um, the Obama Inheritance. Including our, our uh, book we've right. done together. The Obama right. Inheritance. Gary's right. also been included in Jim Fusilli's, uh Crime Plus Music, That's plus right. my That's collection, right. uh, The Faking of the President. The faking of the so, President. Uh, yeah. This is our uh, fourth uh, time together, and it's yeah. uh, very exciting to work with Gary because, and it's an honor to work with him. He's he's so talented. He makes it makes writing look so easy, and, <laughs> and, and it's so. But what you write is so complex. Uh, the complexities. <laughs> You make easy. You make well, easy. I don't. I easy. don't know. But anyway, but hopefully people will dig the story. They're, they're, these are your know, sci-fi pulp kind of kind of tales, and uh, I guess there's a little horror, a little fantasy element too. Now, now that I think about it, but yeah, but I, I, hopefully people will dig these stories. Uh, they, they will. It's a Mondo pulp collection, <laughs> uh, and that was another one you quoted, and it just fell into place. It, that's what it was. You know, nobody's ever heard of a Mondo pulp collection. Um, how would you describe that? Uh, you, I mean, you just did basically, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think this, these stories kind of run the gamut, so they're they're kind of a mashup. So, for instance, there's a story about a uh, uh, a hitman who can uh, astral project uh, his image, and so which of course makes it great for him to scout out his targets. But naturally, there's a complication along the way. Uh, uh, in Crag's Last Escape, uh, it's a sci-fi tale where a uh, actually it's funny we were just talking about this in terms of. Uh, this uh, this uh, set in the future where this uh, undercover agent, as it were, uh, uh, steals this alien tech, and then she gets uh, uh, found out and, and chased uh, down to a planet, and things don't go as uh, either her or her pursuers uh, planned. Uh, so yeah, so the the, the stories kind of run this range of uh, sort of crime uh, plus science fiction uh, plus some fantasy elements. Plus uh, any other thing I could come up with, uh, ah. demon, de you know, demon, demon of the track, which is the first story in the book, uh, starts out uh, with a uh, with a hot rod guy uh, who uh, who encounters this uh, person who turns out to be an Aztec vampire. So it's kind of, but it's kind of a Roger Corman kind of uh, homage because it's set in the late fifties in uh, out here in California uh, in uh, Venice, California when Venice in those days 
was still called the slum by the sea. Right. Where now, right, right. Where nowadays it's uh, all the high tech people who uh, built these uh, Abbott man Kinney, you know, mansions. Yeah, I, I don't even have enough money to say Abbott Kinney now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, go. so well, and we're you're going to be in conversation tonight with Christopher Chambers, your dear friend and 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 colleague, uh, and another, so, and another well, fine three rooms press uh, offer. Uh, yeah, absolutely, another fine three rooms press offer. Why don't we Why don't we bring up Chris here now, sure. and then we'll cut you two loose uh, to discuss uh, uh, the work and and and, and the field and, and and you know uh, pulp itself. So uh, here's Christopher Chambers. So let's add him to the stage. Hey, hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, hey. how are you? <laughs> You're looking fabulous there, let me Thank tell you. you. And uh, Chris is uh, was also in the Obama inheritance and the faking of the president. That's right. And also has two fine Dickie Cornish books. Uh, Scavenger was first. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. Well, wait, I was doing it the right way. What happened? There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Scavenger and... Standalone. So Dickie Cornish is uh, there, alive and well, and I think there's even more of him coming, right? He's so uh, we'll talk he's about seen. that. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, uh, th thank you so much for coming on, Chris, and, and oh, no and problem, take, taking the time to spend with Gary and discussing this Mondo Pulp collection and and the writing of pulp, uh, as opposed to say noir or just a regular straight mystery. Uh, and, well, and all the great work Gary has done, and, and you have done too. Uh, you both have much to discuss. So uh, let me let me. Just, I'm going to leave you two alone here on the screen, and 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 you can take it in in your directions. And then maybe uh, when I run that banner I talked about at the bottom, maybe Gary can read a little something from the book. Oh and yeah. Then we'll all get then we'll all get together at the end. How does that sound? Uh, great. Yeah, right. I gotta get a, I gotta get a copy of the book in front of me. No, uh oh, you don't out. have it. I'm sorry, I should have brought that up here. You can have mine. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'll figure it out. You got one? Is yeah, it okay? I'll figure out something. I'll figure I, out. I something. didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, you right. don't that's have right. to read. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I was well, wrong. I, I said the wrong too. thing. Not there you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> all right, I'm out of here. So I'll wait till you get your uh, copy. Thank no, no, let's go. let's go. Good? Let's go. All right. Yeah, let's go. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Well, Gary, um, before, you know, I want to talk about E.C. Stoner and the golden age of black comics and fans. Yes. As well, uh, but I want to get to something first. I have actually lived this co this cover. <laughs> Back when we did when we did the signing of uh, the Obama uh, thing. Back in L.A., yeah, we went to the after party in your hoopty. That, that yes, that 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 um that convertible, and you know we you know we we're driving through L.A. in in this in this 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 convertible, and you know you're behind the wheel like that, and I don't know where the hell we are because I don't know L.A. It, it is hot as hell now. Of course, I didn't know about it being hot in October. <laughs> at least now on the east coast it is i didn't know it was global warming but back then you know the scariest thing i knew about was all the houston fans in there for the world series yeah. be that as it may it was hot as hell it was dark there was we were driving through some neighborhood that looked like they had bulldozed and destroyed everything to gentrify it there, the buildings were either knocked down or being built mm. i thought you were about to whip out a machine gun like charlton heston in the Omega Man. In the Omega Man. There we go, baby. That's right. Of these buildings. There we and go. I, I mean, there was nobody around. It was dark as hell, but we were in the middle of a city. And so I was living this cover, everybody. I was living <laughs> this cover. You know, that thing was, I, this thing and the pterodactyl were about to come down. <laughs> so Gary in his giant convertible hoopty. There we go. You know, Swoop me out of danger. So I just wanted to just let you all know. That's a great. That's a great. That's a great lead in. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but but man, uh, you know, this is great to to have you here. I mean, we've been doing. You know, I mean, we did Black Pulp together. Yep. Oh and, yes. Know, oh man. Yeah. There you go. Elements that's of that. this and everything. And oh my God, that's it. Bring yeah, it back to oldies, I, baby. Oh yeah, man. Oldies but goodies. But I, right. I want I want to talk about you know Pulp before we get to EC Stoner. And black comics and yes. black pulp, but you, you you have a bunch of stories in here. I mean, like Desal Plant Number Nine and, and Craig's Last Escape. That's 
the sci-fi flavor. Tobin and Garrigan is kind of like the noirish, crimeish yes. kind of thing to some extent. You have your Matthew Henson, the Polar Explorer. You know, I mean that that's your your, your standalone novel. Um, the, that's you know adventure. Um, you know, uh, uh, Brett Cotto's that reminds me of like an Asian Derek Flint. Exactly. That's right. Very good. That's and then, right. You know, you got your horror, and then there's Shadrach, the Soul Shaker. I don't know what you were smoking when you wrote, uh, yeah. when you wrote that, but I want some of that. Um, your pimp hand was very strong when you wrote that. Um, but you know, what is the what is the common DNA? You know that that that, yeah. that 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 binds the horror, the sci-fi, the noir, the crime, the detective, the adventure. Um, you know, th there's some kind of common DNA that that, cr that 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 creates the pulp. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter what the what the little flavoring is, whether it's a vampire or some daring do guy swooping in on a vine with a, with a machine gun. It, it, it's Dang. all pulp. But what right. what is that commonality? If you can explain that. Well, I, I think in a nutshell, Chris, you, you know, as as you well know, uh, uh, you know, pulp goes back, or, or or at least the origins of pulp, you know, are, are right in the in the thirties, and and originally, of course, it just had to do with the the cheap paper, right? That the uh, that these magazines that you bought for a dime, and then I think eventually a quarter at the newsstand, and and they would always have what they called a novel length adventure, right? Fifty to sixty thousand word story in the front, uh, and then short story. And and they ranged the, the gamut, right? Mystery. I mean, you know, there was the Black Mass Pulp, which of course uh, uh, Chandler and Hammett uh, uh, and uh, uh, the guy who created uh, Perry Mason, uh, Earl Stanley Gardner, uh, you know, yeah, uh, did their, did the short stories for kind of learning their craft and honing their stuff. And uh, but there was sports. There was romance. It was all this, you know, all all kinds of of, uh, of genres, all kinds of stories uh, that uh, that these uh, publishers did to, you know, essentially capture the public's attention or capture those quarters, uh, but to, to get the public's attention. And and but as it turned out, because the writers had to grind, you know, if you were the if you were writing The Shadow or Doc Savage, and uh, you know, you had to grind out a story. Each you had to have to grind on the story in two or three weeks because then it had to be ready for publication. And then you took off, took a little breather and you had to grind out the next one. And at some point, I think the shadow was published twice a month. So it, invariably, of course, they always had to hire ghostwriters to try to stay ahead of the game. But still, the primary writers always had to you know be on the on their game. And so this created a kind of style, right? Quick staccato kind of delivery, uh, over the top characters. Uh, uh, quixotic locales, all that kind of stuff came to define uh, what pulp was, and and but from it then, like like we were saying, you know, came other writers who uh, essentially broke out of that, right? Hammett, Chandler, uh, and they helped it sort of redefine the mystery field. And now, as we've come into this uh, century, uh, what would have been in the old days, I guess, uh, fandom. Uh, uh, Magazines reprinted on on the old uh, Gestetter. That's how old I am. Uh, uh, now, because of print on demand or what have you, and the, the, so the fans of the old pulps are are, are around because a lot of some of those old pulps got reprinted in the sixties and seventies, particularly Doc Savage and the Shadow and the Spider, and other characters. Uh, and now this have we have a kind of era of new pulp and new pulp or neo pulp is pulp. In that kind of same vein, but as you and I sit here and, and you held up Black Pulp, it is in fact different in the sense of yes, there's, there's still all kinds of characters, but particularly for people of color in the old days, because most of those pulp writers were white, if there was a person of color showing up, it was in a stereotypical role or it was in a background role or just on the stage, off the stage kind of thing. Or maybe there were, quote unquote, the yellow peril, right? Fu Manchu, Wu Fang, that kind of thing. Whereas nowadays you have a lot of different people writing uh, pulp stories uh, or pulp kind of stories, uh, as well as uh, women, as well as gay, straight, whatever. And so all those sensibilities now have changed the pulp, even though if those, some of those stories are set in the past, some of those stories are also set now, and some of the stories are set in the future. So the so the 
the range of the kind of pulp stories that are told from different points of view has been more uh, more bracing, and I think in a lot of ways much more inviting in terms of people coming to the to the forum. Well, we're going to get to that that bridge from the past to the present um, soon, so keep that in mind. Um, but um, but in in this same vein, and I'm going to ask the sixty four thousand dollar question now because we're both also uh, mystery and crime writers, right? Um, is it fair to say that pulp is the the original DNA? Is the original uh, link to all the stuff that you know? That is that now because you mentioned Hammett, you mentioned Chandler. I mean Patricia Highsmith, who wrote, you know, the the, the Tom Ripley novel, started off writing Paul. Right. I mean, it, it, and, it, and, and, and Highsmith also wrote comics for for a yeah, of wrote years. comics. Yeah, I yeah. mean, is it yeah. is pulp the you know the original DNA that crime fiction thrillers of today, spy novels. And now four color comics and graphic novels of today at all, you know, could, could we say it is the, you know, phytobacteria, you know, that became yeah. the dinosaurs yeah. that became the apes that became us. I mean, can we make that jump? That's a nice, that's a nice, yeah, I like that. It's a nice, that's a nice linkage. I don't, I think, I think that, that, you know, <laughs> I'm, not made, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out. That's it. But no, but it, it, it certainly threads its way through there and we can listen. We can even go back a, a step further or step back right. further which is even before pulps, and we had the Penny Dreadfuls, right? Which were, right. which were the, uh, 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 again, the same format. These, these, these novels you bought for, I guess, in those days, a couple of pennies, but right. you bought them because they would tell you tales of uh, Wild Bill Hickok or or uh, uh, Buffalo Bill or Deadwood Dick. Uh, actually, it turns out there were several uh, cowboys, black and white, that used that name. Right. Uh, but they were reinvented, right? They were reinvented for uh, the public consumption. Uh, and sometimes their tales, of course, became even more outlandish because you knew the name, but you didn't really know about their exploits. And so, therefore, in a lot of ways, these writers had free reign to, to make up whatever they wanted to make up, which they did. Uh, and so, then, so that lineage brings us, to, you know, to the to the to the thirties and the and the pulp magazines, and and as you just laid out, and and onward, and and to where we are today, where even even now, um, we still have comics, we still have. Uh, well, hell, I guess Doc Savage has been revived and reviled. I, I would mention by some fans in, in these new these new novels that uh, Patterson and, and Stitz are doing. But uh, but you also have now various efforts to put um, short stories uh, online, right? And uh, and maybe combine that with animation or or, or uh, stills of uh, illustrations or what have you. So the idea that we're still hungry for stories, that we're still hungry for these 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 uh, these tales, these adventures, uh, and they can be more grounded in reality, as you said. You know, we're, we we when I write a, when we write crime and mystery, that certainly is a different kind of tone and a different kind of pace right. than you do for pulp. Uh, but in the end, uh, we are storytellers, and uh, one way or the other, we want to hopefully capture folks' imagination and uh, you know keep them turning those pages. So, um, just one last thing about the, the DNA. I mean. At some point, would you say that the works of Donald Goins and Iceberg Slim are a, are a, 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 a kind of pulp, and that feeds into that DNA at some point, you know, and, and helps, you know, spice yeah, it up? A yeah, yeah. No, it's great. You know, it's great that you brought them up for some of the folks out here uh, who might be watching this now or, or seeing it later. Goins and Beck were the, well, particularly, particularly, uh, of course, Robert Beck, aka Iceberg Slim. Right. Um, Slim had been a pimp and a hustler and all kinds of things, and uh, and he wrote fictionalized versions of those of his adventures, of his experiences, and he drew on those experiences in telling these tales. And then Goins, who at the time when he first encounters uh, uh, Beck on the page, uh, he's in prison, right? And uh, right. kind of like like uh, like Chester Himes, he he gets inspired and he says, "Well, you know, I've done some of the same stuff." Uh, I bet you I can write. I bet you I can write this, and and, and he right. then you know uh, does that. And it's not for nothing, by the way, that both these guys uh, were published by the infamous uh, Holloway House, which was Holloway a white House. Publisher, a, a white publisher out here in Los Angeles, who had started out in the uh, those two guys had started out in the uh, 
I guess it would what they would have called the skin mags in those days, right? Kind of the right. soft porn kinds of mags that they made their money. Uh, and because in those days, you didn't buy a Holloway house, and they were all paperback original. You didn't buy a Holloway house paperback, and I should, I should mention Joe Nazel too, who also wrote for them, who I who I got to know a little bit. Uh, you didn't buy a Holloway house uh, paperback in a in those days. We had the Pickwick books bookshops or those other chains, or uh, that's not where you bought uh, those books. You bought those books at the supermarket or on the or on the uh, stand or on the rack. Uh, yeah, at the, the, at the thrift, yeah, at the at the uh, at the thrifty drugstore. That's right. or, at the, or at the newsstand. Uh, you could get them at a right. newsstand too, right? Uh, and that, and, but but they knew their audience. I mean, uh, uh, the cats at, who ran Holloway House knew the audience they were reaching, uh, and and those in a lot of ways those are big runaway hits. Yeah, right. The um, well, let's yeah, let, let's. This is a good segue into, but we're going to go back to the stories and the. In the collection, but let's go. Let's go ahead and talk about EC Stoner and Phantasmo, yes, and the golden uh, uh, golden age of black comics and black pulp. Um, you you pay homage to Phantasmo and ba and you know you create a story around that uh, a new story right around uh, around that. Tell us, you know, tell the audience a little about this um, because it, it, you actually have illustrations. In the book for Fantasmo, yeah, from which, from know, our from our cover artist uh, Adam yeah, Shaw, who yeah. did a great and that great goes job. Back to what yeah. we did in um in, in in the Darker Mask. That's um, right, that's right, yeah. exactly. Tell us about that a little bit. So, it turns out uh, that even in the uh, early days of comics, where as comics start to become what they what they are now. Uh, and I'm talking about like in the 40s, late 30s, early 40s, there were in fact several. Uh, black comic artists who worked then in comics. Uh, E.C. Stoner was one of them. Uh, in those days, you had what they called a, uh, a lot of uh, were uh, packagers, right? So that uh, so that you worked for a particular studio where the studio would just be a, an assortment of, of, of artists and inkers and, and, and letterers. And uh, and maybe you guys worked all in one big room, or maybe you guys you know came in and got your assignment and left and went home and and, and drew up your pages, but and then the, and then the studio's job was to supply the publisher with X amount of pages per per month, maybe about you know maybe it was Blue Beetle or whatever whatever the characters were that the that the that the publisher owned or w was printing, uh, you would you do up those those features, you would do up those strips. Uh, and, in, and in fact, Stoner was one of those artists, Emil Cecil Stoner. Now, he would go on to become a fine artist. But in 1940, that year, and he's credited in several sources, including uh, The Invisible Men, uh, which is a great resource uh, about uh, those, those early days, those early pioneers uh, in, uh, in comics, uh, with uh, creating this character of uh, Phantasmo. And Phantasmo borrowed a lot from... Uh, at uh, the, the, the Spectre, who was the character that DC Comics had. And, and, and of course, like typical, uh, borrowing some from the Pulse, typical, the, the, the uh, character, uh, Phil Anson, had studied for, uh, among the mystics in Tibet <laughs> for 25 years. Uh, and he comes, comes back to uh, New York City and uh, decides to uh, fight crime and such. And uh, apparently he has no means of support other than but he lives in a swank hotel i tell you that much and uh maybe he had inherited money like you know all those guys did in those days uh and uh his thing was he he would astral project now when he would astral project his uh his normal body would go inert but his astral projected form which was phantasmal could, could solidify so phantasmal could grow to you know great heights he could lift up uh train cars and he could do all these crazy things right and and fought you know spies and what have you uh, the the villain of the day and uh but the fact that stoner created this character and drew this character i, I always found of great interest and so now in in this collection which uh, phantasm was the the original story in it uh i give homage to, to stoner I, I you know lay all this out in the introduction to the story uh, about who he was and, and how i came upon him uh and uh and in my tale it's a modern version, and I, uh, as they say now, I retcon the character, and the character, and I, exp the character appears. Uh, uh, what's the word they use these days? Well, anyway, he 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 uh, he seems to be black, or he, he certainly appears to be black in the story, but 
in the story that I also explained how is it that he could have been white all those right. years ago. Right. But, and, and so I fool with that as well. But, but anyway, all that says I had a lot of great fun um, taking uh, Stoner's character, bringing right. him down a few, few notches. I don't want to make him so powerful that he, w that he couldn't be uh, that you wouldn't find it of interest when he battles a a, a villain because you know the, the problem you have with Superman, right? If Superman can do everything, well then what's what's the point? Uh, yeah, so you got to grow the size of a train. You know, to that's pick right. Up well, exactly. Motive. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. So so you know, I had to had to narrow him down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but but to to hopefully to make him a bit more relatable. Uh, but as well, but then had a lot of fun uh, telling that story. Yeah, I mean it was you know it, it was it was the perfect. Um, um, you know, cap off to these, to these stories. I mean, you know, it, it, I, and again, I mean, it, it, I, 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 I like the way you had this range as we started off talking about, you know, the sci-fi, like with, with Craig and D cell plant and, and, and the, you know, the, the more noir crimey ones and, and seeing Matt Henson again, you know, was cool. And, and the black, the black pepper now, that's cool. But, you know, and you get these this range and then boom, you, you finish with what I think most people who are, you know, if you want to call them lay people would think is definitely pulp. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you set the table to show pulp. No, pulp is all of this stuff. And the DNA is in everything that, you, you know, that you're reading now. Right. Um, I mean, did you plan it that way? I mean, why didn't you start off with uh, Phantasma? That's a good question. I, well, you know, Peter, actually, there's a couple of stories that didn't make the cut for ver for a couple of different reasons or various reasons. But I always knew, I think Peter and I always knew, because, you know, we talked about the order. You, you always, you're right, try to figure that out, right? What are the order stories and how do you want to hopefully pull a, uh, your reader through each story? Uh, but I, we always knew, I think, that Phantasm, because it was going to be the new story. And as you said, you want to kind of give them uh, the folks a taste for all these other kind of ranges of stories. And because we know that there's a very, very specific direct link uh, between uh, between pulp and comics. I mean, there, there is a reason that uh, uh, Batman uh, borrows from the shadow as well as from Zorro. Uh, Superman actually borrows some from, uh, from Doc Savage. Doc Savage, in fact, had the first, what he called his Fortress of Solitude. Right. Uh, so that... So that as I journey through or these variations on on the theme, it it only seemed natural that Phantasmo, because I am now I'm I'm taking you taking this comics character now I'm giving him a prose uh, redefinition a prose relaunch. It just seemed natural that 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 story should then be the ending story, uh, drawing on these various traditions that we've that I've kind of outlined and laid out in the book. I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back just for a minute because I was up uh, earlier in the week. I had a jury duty. Yeah. And I'm sitting in, in you know, you know, we're, we're in the middle of DC crime wave, you know. So oh I'm man, sitting, yeah. I'm sitting in the jury duty room, and I'm reading this story, and everybody's quiet in the jury, you know, yeah. the jury room, and I start, I burst out laughing because <laughs> I'm reading this passage. And here's the and this the the, the, the clerk act you know I'm not, I'm not in that courtroom I'm in the right. jury lounge. Right. Clerk comes over and tells me to shut up. <laughs> I'm sitting here reading this passage. Red had parlayed the character into a couple of low budget actioners in the '80s, Shatterock versus Doctor Funkenstein, and Shatterock Seekers of the Pimp Cane. Both had done well at the box office, enough so that Red had been preparing a third outing, the bigger budget. Shaolin Shadrach died <laughs> of a heart attack as he panted while peeling off the panties of a percussionist named <laughs> Sheila Ramirez. <laughs> I had forgotten where I was, and I just and and and, and the, the clerk said, "Excuse me, sir," and I was like, uh, um, "Sheila, he's going to get you for that." That's okay. right. That's true. That's yes, um, yes. Oh my God. Um, I uh, you know, and, uh, can I? Uh, I'm going to take a point of privilege here. What is this story really about? <laughs> I have never asked an author any of that in my life. And I'm going to, for the for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to hear me ask, what is this story about? And I'm not, not spoiler alert. Right, anything. Right, just, right, right, right. 
Well, well, I think it's fair to say, as you no doubt. I mean, we don't want to give it away, but no, no, I don't give it away. But no, but as you as you no doubt recognize, uh, the the uh, spirit of Dolomite uh, (laughs) uh, lingers in this story, right? Yeah. Uh, And for Dolomite, for the folks who don't know, the late great Rudy Ray Moore. Oh Lord, have mercy. His alter ego was a was a character of uh, of myth and black exploitation called Dolomite, who he fit, he played uh, he talked about on stage, but he also uh, played in a in a series of very low budget, quite low budget uh, uh, films. Although, and and then I will say then right the my name is Dolomite, the recent one with Eddie Murphy, where he where he kind of looks at this at this uh, uh, era. At this time period, uh, playing Rudy Ray Moore is a good is a good opening for folks to just watch that and then get to the to to the hardcore films. Anyway, so Dolomite is is definitely floating around this story. Uh, Shades of Funkadelic and uh, Maggot Brain and the Cosmic Slop are also wafting their way, weaving their way through this story. So you know we're old, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know you. You know you're old. There, <laughs> right? And, and Shea Black himself, of course, is 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 my version uh, of of our of the late great Rick James, uh, and particularly right. right, and Rick James uh, after he had had uh, the stroke, and right. so all those are kind of elements at play, elements at work uh, in this story, which, as you as you point out, it takes uh, leaps and bounds of uh, reality. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. I've been waiting yeah. all week. But I, 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 by the way, that, I saw all that in there, but I was like, yeah, yeah. It, but it's know, perfect that you read that passage. Know. That's 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 the perfect passage. I that, I I need to read Thank no you. more because that's it. I that's perfect. It. Yes, yes, I sir. I, I appreciate you read now. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the um, let me let me um, let me ask you this though. We we we, we were talking about you know. Paul, um, I, I mean, we want to call it maybe call it general or mainstream or yeah. white pulp through the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. But it, 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 when you when you write the, the Black Pimper now, although you know you're doing it tongue tongue in cheek, yes. you know, with yeah. with, with uh, Obama and, and and Trump, but with Matthew Henson, Henson um, and I, you know, and I did it with, um, I guess with. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing some feedback here. I hope I yeah. um, with uh, Rocket Crockett. Rocket back. Crockett. That's right. That's right. But, um, do you think that uh, minorities, if you want to call us that, uh, people who are writing, uh, we're doing pulp. Do we have to really be mindful as to to, to really erase that that era? Um, huh. be, you know. Because you know you, you see that I mean when you look at these old pulp novels you look at the old pulp comic books there, there, there's the buana in the in 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 in, in, the, in in the hat you know you've got the Africans you know carrying the stuff right, and then right. scared, you know, the lions eat them or you've got the, the yellow peril with the buck teeth right and, and they're you know carrying away some blonde right some blonde and you know from what I I have seen sometimes the 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 temptation is to basically take that, and even back in the 30s, the temptation was to take that white male hero and give him a tan. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the a lot of these heroes were fighting a yellow peril also, mm-hmm. but he was rescuing the the buxom uh, um, Sugar Hill bronze, you know, mm-hmm. uh, goddess from you know from Harlem instead mm-hmm. of a blonde from a, from a, a buck tooth stereotypical uh yellow peril mm-hmm. and he might have even had african bears in, in this safari i mean are we what, what what was i mean was that something that you know why why did we start with that because a lot of the black pulps with basically giving the the white characters a tan and some of the these tropes some of these offensive tropes survived you know um you know if 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 that if that's the word Mm -hmm. um what's the explanation for that well i I will say this hopefully those offensive tropes don't survive in my stories but but, 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 yeah 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 but 
Well, I don't know. I think there's several things at all at the same time, Chris. You're right. So on one hand, right, you can't um, – you shouldn't erase that past, right? So you, should, you shouldn't say, oh, well, don't go read those stories because we're going to make those the forbidden fruit and you shouldn't read right. those. You should read them. I mean, you know. It, but I would say – right, but you would – you would still say you have to read them with a certain, uh, you can't help but read them with a certain, but have a certain consciousness about the time period these stories were written and, and what these, and, and the limitations of these stories, right? So there's right. that, there's that. But I'm, I'm for, listen, I'm not for, you know, if somebody wants to read those stories, and they are, right? They, they, God knows they, I think somebody was just recently reprinting uh, the Fu Manchu stuff. All right, fine. But yeah, that, and Edgar Rice Burroughs. Too. Yeah, and Edgar Rice Burroughs. Right? There you go. That's right. That's right. That's right. Edgar Rice Burroughs. That's right. Which is interesting, right? Because then in the in the la latest version, uh, Samuel Jackson shows up. Now he, Samuel Jackson actually is playing a real character, a real person right. who was who really worked to uh, at in that time period uh, publicize essentially the genocide that that uh, that uh, was happening like to King Leopold, right, yeah, like yeah. King Leopold, etc. That's right. That's right. So. All, so all that to say is that I get it sort of gets back to the to the earlier point, which is to say, I think as long as you, we understand that that stuff exists and, it, and and there it is, and and that if you as a writer today are using those tropes, then that probably does say something about maybe your lack of research <laughs> and your and your lack of understanding of, of of what is required or what is what needs to happen. I think in the sense of. You can't just write this stuff and not comment on it, because otherwise it's, it, it seems you, you, nobody can have that tin, tin of an ear, right? Although yeah. I suppose maybe some of that is, right? Because I know that there's a, I know within comics, there's a uh, there's a whole thing about uh, what are they? They're, they're essentially ma uh, MAGA kind of guys who 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 decry uh, uh, all these women they're running like around. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Wokeness yeah. in yeah. comics yeah. and and, 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 and are ter yeah. terrified of right. Can't have these black characters. Blah 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 blah. Or straight or or LGBTQ right. characters, right? Well, too bad because they're here to stay, and and there you go. But if you want to be, you know, uh, in in your little cubby hole, uh, reading reprints of Wu Fang until Doomsday, well, I, that what can we do about that? That that's you. Right. That's that's on you. But on the other hand, for a lot of us, uh, we want to still explode those tropes, explode that past. And you know, refer, you know, it's, it's 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 the reversal thing, right? The perfect example, of course, which has been used, is um, is uh, I think it's a farewell, my lovely, right? Where uh, 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 Chandler's, uh, where uh, uh, Marlowe is on Central Avenue, and he walks into a black bar, or he said, oh no, I think it starts out with I was I was on on Central Avenue, that a part that wasn't all colored just yet or something like that right, right, all, right. yeah yeah and and he walks into he's the white man walking into the bar he's the white man is describing the scene to you whereas then the reverse of course then is in in Gar's book uh fear of the dark which was a, which was a right. modern setting and in walter's book uh devil in blue dress Bruce it is blue the dress. black man sitting in the bar seeing the white man come in but is we stay with the viewpoint of the of the black man so there right. so I think in a lot of ways that encapsulates what we're trying to achieve here, which is to say you can still have all the same things happen. It does really matter whose point of view is telling you these things or whose point of view you're experiencing these events, uh, whose eyes are you experiencing these, these events through Dickie Cornish on the street, et cetera, as opposed right. to, as opposed to the social worker observing Dickie Cornish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see. We have. Yeah. Get your copy at the three rooms. That's right. Baby. That's right. <laughs> or do you want to read anything um, while we we're, we're in this little? No, no. Uh, I, I listen. No, no. I'm not going to read nothing because I cannot top that excerpt that you read. <laughs> and and, and no. I actually met. I actually met Sheila E. So it's okay. Right. 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 <laughs> I, met, I knew I knew her father, Pete Escovedo. Right on, right, right. See, right on. Yeah, That's so it. That's right. I, there you go. I happen to know him through a couple of jazz players. Right on. I got to meet her, but uh, right I didn't get to get that close. To there you go. There we go. <laughs> it's just no, fiction. What, it's just fiction. What, what an honor! What an enjoyable conversation to be 
with both of you, uh, you know, here at the same time, but also sitting off to the side here, off the screen, uh, and know that I'm coming back on here because, you know, the the, the truth of, of you both is are the activists that you are uh, in real life, both of you, and and that just shines through so much, and and it just makes me, you know, feel so honored. To, to, to share well, not only the screen, but to publish your work. Uh, well, I was going to say, uh, Peter, we're both honored that you, that you are a publisher. That's, uh, you know, yes, that's, that's, that's a good deal. Thing. Thank you. Yeah, but, man. But, I mean, both of you, the activists, uh, you know, you now the strike is over on, on both sides, right? You yeah, 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 the, yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, the, there's a tentative deal with the actors now, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah. mean, you had a lot to do. You were in there fighting every day. And, Chris, we oh, need the you. conflict resolution, man. You got <laughs> right, to right. go. You know, you That's got to it. get back to work. Hey, man. Here, but I, I, but I, both I, of you spend your life, you know, not just writing great prose. Uh, but but also in this uh, helping the world to be a stronger place for uh, everyone, uh, let alone people of color, uh, you know, uh, just just, you know, really putting it out there every day. Thank you. It's, it's such a Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. such an honor That's to great. have have your work on our list. Uh, both uh, the unvarnished is what we're talking about. Get that book. Right down here on the bottom of your screen, you can order it right now. And of course, uh, the Obama inheritance and and both of Chris's books. That's it, uh, baby. You know, uh, these are uh, uh, these are the geniuses of our time. You know, this is uh, <laughs> seriously. You know, Thank you. it was such yeah. a great conversation. And uh, please, please get uh, please get uh, the unvarnished Gary Phillips. Amando Pulp Collection, and we'll be looking uh, for the next Dicky Cornish too. What's going on oh, yeah. with that? Oh yeah, he's uh, well, he's drinking again, unfortunately. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, <laughs> he's uh -oh. The wagon, oh no! There's All a right. reason for it. Yeah, right. Sadly. Well, I guess we'll take us off the screen, and maybe we'll get spend a little time together. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining us out there and. And a viewer land, yeah, and, viewer uh, land Facebook that's right. and YouTube yeah. live. And thank you, Gary, for uh, thank you. writing uh, thank all you, these great Chris. stories. This was, this was wonderful. This writing terrific. all these great stories that yeah. make the Mondo Pulp Collection, The <laughs> Unvarnished. So uh, pick that up, and uh, we'll see you uh, the next time. So, all right, you guys. Thank you.